Welcome to the boating adventure. Good morning, it's Wednesday the 31st of August 2022 and today Zach and I have come to the top end of the Erewash Canal and we're at Lock 72 which is Shipley Gate Lock and we're going to take Kenny the Kayak north westward towards Langley Mill. Now we haven't done this together before so we're going to use this as a little bit of a training video. So the first thing you'll see is that we are both wearing buoyancy aids. These are just there to assist us with getting out of the water. A question I often see asked on a lot of the Facebook kayaking groups and canoeing groups is first of all, do you need a license? And the short answer is yes, you do need some kind of license. And the one that I go for is this one this is British canoeing. It costs £45, which is less than a pound a week. And this gives you permission to kayak or canoe almost anywhere. So it's very good value for money. And the other thing it does is it gives you £10 million of liability insurance should you get into some real problems. So the short answer, yes, you do need a license. It doesn't have to be that one you can invest in individual licenses from the various waterways authorities but that's going to cost you a lot more than £45. There are quite a few useful apps that you can download in particular things like Go Paddling where you'll find um, opportunities where you can uh, take your kayak and canoe and very often people have already visited those places and they'll have put little reviews on and any bits of information. I found this one on the Go Paddling site. I've used it before. It tells you that there's a free car park and it tells you how to get here. And it also tells you about some of the facilities that we're going to be heading towards at Langley Mill. Today we are using Kenny the Kayak, which is an Ituit uh, two-person kayak. And we'll just film setting it up and uh, then we can get going. So we're going to set up the kayak here, just on the last bollard of the lock landing. So we're not getting in anybody's way if a, if a boat comes along. There you go. Take a quick feet on there. What you need me to get to do is to get that there, the, the pressure to about 1.5 and stop. So all of the chambers on this kayak are inflated to a pressure of 1.5 and we've got the gauge on the pump. And this is what I brought Zach to do. Nearly there? Yeah. Nearly there? He's joined a gym, but he doesn't need to. He could come here and do this. <laughs> oh, one, two. That'll do. Hard work. Keep going. Thank <laughs> you. 
so that's all of the inflation done. So we take this with us because we might need it. The next thing to, to go on are the three skegs, called skegs. Don't know why, they're called skegs. So these go on the bottom, these help with steering. It is useful to get yourself a couple of ropes. The paddles are connected to the boat using a couple of kayak paddle leashes and they are placed behind each seat. The way to get in the kayak is to, to basically, you're going to almost sit down here like this and then you're going to put a foot in then you're going to reach over to that side and then you're going to pull yourself across. Okay. I'll hold the canoe and then put one foot in yeah. and I'll reach across. And then just hook in. Yeah, put the other one across, put the other foot in and then reach across into the seat. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Well done, that's brilliant. Right. Good. So that was a perfect way of getting in. So you use the bank, lean over, put your foot in, then the other one and then transfer your weight. Don't try and stand in them, that's not a very good idea because it will topple. So I'm sitting on the side of the bank here, put the feet in, transfer my weight to the other side, and then over. And that's it. That's the way to do it. Quite easy really, isn't it? A vital piece of equipment I always find is plenty of this uh, sanitizer. One of the problems that you do have with rivers and canals is things like leptospirosis. So anything you can do to minimise that to risk, the better. So I always use plenty of sanitizer when I'm out on the canals. Okay, so we're about ready to go. Comfortable? Yep. So let's just go through a few things. So we're both wearing buoyancy aids. We set the kayak up and we showed you how we got in without too much fuss. So I've put Zach in the front, he's in the steering and I'm in the engine. So we're just going to have a, a gentle cruise now up the uh, Erewash Canal. Off we go. Right, so you're on the black, yeah? And then that way, and that way, that's it. That's all there is to it. That's it. The little black um, circular discs, mm -hmm. they're supposed to stop the water <laughs> coming at you, but they don't work very well. It still drips down. So it's the same rules on the kayak as it is for when we're on the swamp duck. We stay on the right hand side, but if there's nothing around, we'll sit in the middle. I doubt very much we'll meet anything on this canal. You okay? Yep. If 
feel when the wind gets you a bit, it pulls it across here. Yeah. Have to be a bit where the the wind get catching you. So what we're going over now is as an aqueduct. So underneath us will be the Eriwash River. And it more or less follows the canal and both of them end up in the River Trent. You can actually see the bottom of the canal. It's quite clear, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can see that um, there's not much of a channel, is there? Either side, it's it's quite muddy, isn't it? There. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably why a lot of people don't like to use this canal because it's not had much use over the years. Um, it's become quite silted up in places. You'd have a real problem to get to the bank there if you were in a narrow boat or something. Yeah, tons of fish, aren't there? Mm. I think this is the thing I like about kayaking, is you get much closer to nature than you do when you're on the swamp duck and you notice things that you don't really see when you're cruising along on the uh, on the swamp duck. Mm. Yeah, you haven't got the noise. Mm. <laughs> tons of fish. Yeah, because there's no current on here, when you've had enough of paddling, you just, just let it drift for a bit and rest yourself, that's it. Because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> it's really nice just to take in the views. Keep out of his way. Quite a bit rubbish, isn't it? Coming up to Eastwood Lock, 
so we need to uh, take the kayak out and walk it round. This is also a changeover lock, so we, the towpath changes sides. So we do have to take the kayak over that little footbridge in front of us. So that was Eastwood Lock. That was quite easy to get back in, wasn't it? <laughs> getting out was a bit of a struggle, but getting in was okay. So we've got a pair of swans and we've got the the swan that we passed earlier. Oh that the, those they've got some uh, chicks haven't they? Yeah. So we'll have to be very careful with them, especially with this other one, who's probably more of a threat than we are. So we just go gently. Quite mature actually those aren't they?
the heads are not back. They're, they're quite happy. You can tell when a swan is getting unhappy. They put their heads right back into their body. This is called busking and is a warning that they may attack. Mum's looking after the kids and uh, Dad's just standing guard. <laughs> coming behind us to see, say go away. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> you can read them what they're up to just by looking at them what their behaviour is. There's somebody over there, I think he's, he's magnet fishing, isn't he? So basically they have a piece of string with a strong magnet on the end and they just throw it into the canal and see what they can find. Found anything interesting? Yeah, I found a bike. All oh, right, a bike, a whole bike. Wow. <laughs> Was it in any good condition? Or? Uh, it's a bit rusty. Yeah. You do something with it though, maybe. Not that one, I don't think. That's too nice. <laughs> that one's too nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have you found anything interesting? No, not really. No, no treasure. <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> Plenty to go at. <laughs> One, and then we'll get. Oh, we'll just pull it out. Outside. I can always go and fetch it and bring it around. Maybe that's the best way. Do a takeaway. I want to carry the canoe through the drive through. <laughs> So just here is the back entrance to KFC, so I think we're going to make use of that. Here we are at uh, Langley Mill, and uh, we're just sitting outside at KFC. Zach's enjoying himself and uh, Kenny the kayak is down there nice and safe we can keep our eye on it if you do come up to Langley Mill and you're narrowboat or cruiser there's plenty of things here there's a, a little just in the background there's a McDonald's and there's an Asda and there are one or two other shops there's a parade of shops with things like uh, home bargains that kind of thing so there's plenty of places and you can go up the next lock and that takes you into Langley Mill Basin and there are some uh, 
uh, Canal and River Trust facilities there. Uh, not sure what there is, but I think there is a toilet, El San, certainly water points. There's quite a lot of facilities round about, so a good place to be. I think the front engine has been re-energised with a um, KFC. I think we're doing about five mile an hour. It's now Thursday the 1st of September 2022 and having had a good day out yesterday on the area wash canal today's cleaning day so first of all I'll give it a good uh, jet wash and then I'll rub it down with a microfiber cloth and then spray the kayak with some spray disinfectant and then leave it to dry It's a good idea to pay close attention to the runners for the skegs because they can get a little bit jammed and that makes the skegs hard to get in or out. And then I just use this uh, spray disinfectant all in one, does the job. It's important to clean the kayak 
so that you don't transfer waterborne diseases from one waterway to another. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and do take care. And it's a goodbye from me and it's a goodbye from... Goodbye. Goodbye.